Well, first, let me see, uh, say a few words about CIRIX, Center for Research on Extremism. Um, uh, we did a lot of research on the Nazi skinheads and street-based extreme right activism in Norway, Norway during the 1990s and early 2000s. And when these uh, youth subcultures disappeared, so did research in field. Uh, the terrorist attacks that hit Norway in 2011 represented a very different phenomenon, a lone actor radicalized online and much of our knowledge was outdated. So the government of Norway decided to establish a research center to develop a new, a new and updated knowledge on right-wing extremism specifically. As a result, CIRIX was established by the University of Oslo um, wait a minute, um, uh, in, in uh, 2016 with the generous funding for 10 years. And we are now 15 to 20 researchers physically based at the center and a similar number of visiting scholars and, and affiliated researchers. We, we focus of, on five main research themes that are uh, writing terrorism, violence and hate crime, parties and movements, ideology and identity, gender and extremism and prevention and intervention. Uh, our long-term funding makes it possible for us to develop data sets that can be made available to other scholars and in particular, we have the, the Writing Terrorism and Violence, or RTV, data set that currently covers Western Europe from 1990 until today, but it will be expanded to cover far more countries during the coming years. We also publish an annual RTV trend report. Uh, on to the topic of this webinar. One of the defining characteristics of terrorism is that terrorist actors try to make an impact beyond the immediate victims. Most terrorist, uh, terrorist attacks are quickly forgotten beyond those affected, but a few attacks makes, uh, make a lasting impact nationally and even globally. So what are the characteristics facilitating their lasting impacts? In this webinar, we will explore two major terrorist attacks that undoubtedly have caused major impacts although in different ways and to different degrees of magnitude. The 9-11 attacks on New York and Washington in 2001, 20 years ago, and the July 22nd attacks in Oslo and Utøya at 2011. For the 10-year anniversary of these attacks in Norway, CIRIX has recently produced a special issue of the Open Access Journal Perspectives on Terrorism on the long-term impacts of the 22nd of July attacks, uh, and we will present some findings from this. You can just Google the title Perspectives on Terrorism and you will find this is a June issue, so it's just to download. I, I assume that most of you know the basics of the 22nd of July attacks, but here is a brief overview. A right-wing lone actor terrorist, Anders Bering Breivik, first set off a large fertilizer bomb outside the main government building in Oslo. Failing to collapse the building, he traveled uh, to the Utøya Island, where he tried to shoot and drown the participants of the uh, summer camp of the Labour Party Youth Wing. Breivik's intention was to punish the Labour Party for making Norway a multi-ethnic country, use the terrorist attacks to, to advertise and spread his manifesto, and inspire and advise others to carry out similar attacks. At the, I will discuss some of the lasting consequences along three dimensions of impact, individual, societal, and global. And for this purpose of our webinar, I'll focus now mostly on the latter. But at the individual level, level. The consequences are obviously total and permanent for the direct victims of the, uh, those killed in the terrorist attacks and the victims' families and persons close to them. The grief and loss were extremely severe and long standing. One of the studies in a special issue found that the attack had a wide range of negative repercussions for the survivors and the families, mental and somatic health for years after the atrocity, for some even 10 years later. At the national or societal level, there were a variety of short-term and long-term impacts in, uh, in different sectors of society. Such large-scale terrorist attacks may have consequences for public health, the national economy, public administration, security measures, legislation, political processes, culture, and many other sectors. Uh, those present at Utøya during the attack, mostly youths from uh, in their teens from the, and, and early twenties, came from local communities virtually all over the country. And one out of four Norwegians knew someone victimized directly or indirectly by the attacks. So our sense of safety in Norway was shaken. 
The physical destruction caused by the bomb attack on the government district of Oslo was immense. Several ministries and the prime minister's office had to be relocated to other parts of the country, uh, or other parts of the city, and still remain so. The, the total reconstruction of the government district will take at least 15 years after the attack at enormous economic costs. Failures to present or handle major terrorist attacks typically lead to political and administrative changes. Uh, the Norwegian police were severely criticized in the report of the 10th Second of July Commission, pointing out several blunders and deficiencies, implying that many lives could have been saved if the police had been better prepared and had performed better. This critique led to a thorough reorganization of the Norwegian police with, with somewhat mixed outcomes. Terrorist actors often try to, to provoke political authorities to respond, respond in ways that will undermine the legitimacy of the government or cause chain reactions that might further the goals of the terrorist. Anders Bering Breivik was quite explicit in stating that provoking overreactions and, and repression was one of his goals, and he generally failed to achieve this. The, the political and legal um, responses were, were sensible and, and uh, have been praised quite a lot. And trust in government remained high in the population after attacks. A common response to major uh, terrorist attacks is a dramatic increase in security measures. The July 22nd attacks exposed how naive Norwegian society had been in terms of general threat perception. Uh, and its lack of sufficient protective security measures against terrorist attacks. During the following, following months and years, a wide range of security measures were implemented in and around public buildings, and the police security service and several operational police units and functions were strengthened. The attacks were aimed at the governing Labour Party and its youth, uh, youth organization, perpetrated by, by an individual who had some years earlier been an active member of the right-wing populist Progress, Progress Party. Obviously, this made some impacts on the political landscape in Norway. However, time is too short to discuss these complex issues now. Global impacts of terrorist attacks are less common, but some attacks have transnational repercussions, including security politics, global economy, traveling patterns, international law, human rights, and research agendas. The emergence of international uh, live television news, the internet and a variety of social media channels increases the potential global impact of terrorist attacks and the capacity of terrorists to communicate their messages to international audiences through graphic images and verbal manifestos. And this happened also in this case. The July 22nd attacks in Norway did make some global impacts. The magnitude of the uh, victimization at Utøya and the property the destruction in Oslo led to increased concerns among security services, police and policymakers about the potential threats of mass destruction by lone active terrorists. Terrorism from the extreme right also became perceived as, more serious, as a more serious threat than before, although this concern didn't really take a hold until a series of mass shootings by extreme right terrorists in 2019. Uh, some, uh, some that have been in, at least indirectly inspired by the July 22nd attacks. Um, the July 22nd attacks were at the time considered an outlier, and at the time rightly so, both when compared with other lone actor attacks and in the longer history of right-wing terrorism. With very few exceptions, fatal extreme right attacks have typically caused only one fatality, However, the 22nd of July attacks might have set a new standard, and Graham Macklin and Lars Lindbergsen will come back to this in the next two presentations. The July 22nd attacks made also a significant impact on the research agenda in terrorism studies. Although jihadi terrorists had also increasingly turned to lone actor attacks during this period, the July 22nd attacks in 2011 demonstrated the destructive potential of a lone actor. And in the aftermath, there was a huge increase in academic articles, books, and reports on lone wolf terrorists and lone actor terrorists. And this graph was made by Lasser and Bright Bernson in a joint research note we made in the special issue. This is based on... on, on uh, uh, searches in, in Google uh, Scholar uh, on, on lone uh, wolf and lone actor, and you see the huge increase. 
Uh, and it probably this increase during the two, three year after the July uh, 22nd attacks show how lone, act, lone wolf suddenly became a hot topic for researchers, resulting in a flurry of academic output and often of a rather mixed uh, quality, I have to say. So what makes a terrorist, um, some terrorist attacks have lasting impacts? And there is, in my view, at least three factors that may account for a lasting impact of some terrorist attacks, severity, response, and innovation. And the first one uh, is uh, that one obvious reason is that terrorist attacks with large scale destruction and with a high number of casualties will make for greater and more lasting impact than small scale attacks. However, some small scale hate crimes may have also uh, may also make major impacts for other reasons. For example, the racist knife murder of a black boy, the black boy Stephen Lawrence in, in London in, in 1993 had a great and lasting impact as well. Widespread outreach over faulty police investigation and the reluctance of the police to consider the racist dimension of attack led to a pu public inquiry, the McPherson report, concluding that London's Metropolitan Police was was marred by institutional racism. And this issue is still haunting the English police and its relations with minorities. So severity is not alone sufficient to make a lasting uh, impact. The nature of the responses to terrorist attack is also decisive. Um, uh, terrorists usually want to provoke certain types of responses, such as overreactions or failure to respond adequately, that can undermine the legitimacy of the government or the enemy. However, terrorist attacks do also uh, backfire sometimes, uh, bolstering opposition to the uh, terrorist cause and increase support for the authorities. So overstepping the limits of acceptable violence may lead to a backlash among potential supporters. And finally, innovation. Terrorists generally try to make news. However, if terrorist attacks repeat themselves, such attacks may over time lose some of their newsworthiness and impact. So terrorists try to avoid this trap by innovation. Uh, examples are the poison gas attack on the Tokyo subway. Uh, we had the suicide attacks with hijacked airplanes on the iconic buildings in, in the US uh, 20 years ago. And the innovation may also be in terms of attack methods, but also in terms of targeting. For example, attacking, attacking sports events during the uh, Munich Olympics in, in, in 1972 two was it, uh, the, um, the Bestland school siege, or the, um, the uh, attacking school children, or also the politi uh, political youth camps as happened on Utaya. This example illustrates the shock effects of such unprecedented attacks. I will stop uh, there and leave the words to my colleagues. So thanks a lot for your attention.